Great to have you join us on a fresh edition of your news and first current affairs program, Politics Today, that comes live simultaneously on independent television and radio. As you know, we discuss issues that bring about ripples in the polity and how to bring about solutions to the problems bedeviling the polity. And looking at what we have, well, it's quite sure to talk about inflation rate in the country and looking at the need to bring palliatives to the people that are being governed and uh, what palliatives can do in terms of uh, meeting the gap or bridging the gap in order to bring or ameliorate the plights of Nigerians. And that is where we're going to be discussing issues surrounding that light. And of course, insecurity. My name is Philip Omo Gupo. <laughs> well, looking at the hunger, uh, in hunger initiative uh, saga, uh, being started by the government in terms of ameliorating the plight of Edo lights in that regard. The governor has said that uh, the Hungry Initiative, uh, you know, his ambition or his plan is to make sure that about one billion naira, over one billion naira monthly, will be spent on palliative for the poor in the state. And the governor, you know, uh, decided to bring up uh, this amount of money for religious leaders under the body can and of course uh, under uh, the Islamic uh, religion in the state. Uh, looking at what we have here, uh, issues are already emerging on how this is going to be run or how this is going to be done. We can't forget so quickly the uh, free bus ride scheme uh, that came up and got over five billion naira in two months and uh, the free bus ride scheme uh, was also a, another a pilot uh, scheme uh, from the federal government that was to ameliorate the plight of Nigerians over the fierce subsidy remover. But how impactful that scheme was is another issue to talk about another day. But again, we look at the need for us to see what informed the reason of the governor of Edo State, Golino Baseki, to bring about this uh, palliative for the hungry. Well. Could it be that this money could be coming from the federal government or maybe the largesse as rumored by the Senate President Gosul Akpabio when he said an additional increase of about 30 billion naira has been added to states? Although that was refuted by the governor of Oyo State, Shei Makinde, who doubles as the vice chairman of the Nigeria Governors Forum, where he said nothing like that happened. Well, if not that, then what could it be? Could it be a political tool? to maybe bring success to the forthcoming Edo Guba race. <clears throat> a lot of questions are coming. Again, we'll look at insecurity, the issues about the Kaduna abduction, where 287 PPUs were involved. And the uh, situation report, the bandits are saying that in 20 days of adoption, if the federal government doesn't give them one billion naira, a whooping sum, then the hostages will be killed. We have seasoned array of dignitaries, analysts, that will be discussing this with me. And starting from my immediate left, I have a chieftain of the All Progressives Congress, former chairman of Edo Development and Property Authority, former college, a chairman of the College of Agriculture, Igoraki, and former chairman, Board of Governors, Igoraki. Like I said, he's a seasoned legal practitioner, Gentlemen, amigo, thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much indeed. And next to gentlemen, amigo, is a human rights activist, executive director, people's defender, advocate, human rights organization, Bishop Dr. Osadolo A. Oche. Thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. God bless you. Thank you, listeners and viewers at home. God and next you. to the bishop, we have a seasoned analyst, and he is the senior special assistant to the governor of Edo State on religious matters. Osaige God sent Erunse. Welcome. Phil, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Good morning, viewers. Well, I must say that the first throw will be at you on <laughs> <laughs> making an attempt to clear the minds of Nigerians, particularly Edo indigents, Edo residents, on the monthly palliative uh, for feeding the poor or the hungry in Edo State. I, drew a, I, I did a run of what has transpired even in the 
free bus ride, and of course, uh, some impressions about the Edo residents. And also, this palliative for feeding the hungry. Uh, can you throw light into what informed the reason, or is it another largesse from the rumored federal government um, 30 billion era given to the states? Or what is it for? Is it a political tool to win elections? Well, Phil, thank you so much for having me. I, I quite understand when you say there are misconceptions about the palliative. And that is the reason why uh, some of these issues have to be clarified. First of all, let me uh, say that this has nothing to do with any political undertone. And this is just the governor trying to reach out, trying to give what you call a food support. I mean, you and I are aware that it's practically impossible for the governor to feed or the government of Edo State to feed all hungry people. But part of leadership is empathy. You know, sometimes, or a lot of times, more often than not, when we see a government trying to take an initiative, we, we must be very objective, okay? What His Excellency is doing, the executive governor of Edo State, is not the only one that is thinking of how to provide palliative to cushion the effect of the current hardship. We have been in this country and in this state. You will agree with me that uh, quite recently, it has not been so easy for a do citizen in terms of purchasing power of basic food items. I mean, the skyrocketing kept going up and going up and going up. And the governor felt that it is important to demonstrate empathy. People are hungry, not necessarily because he can reach out to everybody, not necessarily because despite the harsh economic realities, there are people that can still survive. Granted, it's affecting everybody, both the rich and the poor, and even the middle class. But however, you will agree with me that there are some persons that are more of the receiving end than some other class of people. So what His Excellency have been able to come up with is to look at it critically and say that, independent of the government, the religious body have been doing what they can do at their own level. Bishop is here. I'm sure at his own level, he has been trying to see how to come true for his church members, for the vulnerable or those that may not be able to afford these things. I haven't seen what these religious bodies are doing. The government of Edo State have only decided to say, can we partner to possibly increase the food quantity that you are distributing to reach the hungry or the vulnerable in the society? I mean, I don't have to raise a case about the hunger in the land. It's something that we can all feel because we live among the people. We know how terrible it is today for people to be able to feel even the one zero one square me a day. Sometimes it's no longer tenable for some homes. Is there a plan to take you know? it all through his administration? For now, this is a pilot phase. And you know the meaning of a pilot phase. That doesn't mean the governor does not have other measures or other things he's implementing. When people say, oh, you should have done this or do that or do that, government is holistic. It's not a one-side approach. The government can decide to say, why we have this sustainable plan. There are a lot of things going on about training people about agricultural intervention, both at the national and at the state level. There are a lot of free training going on and trying to empower people agricultural-wise. What I mean is that there are a lot of measures that is going on to cushion the effect. This is just one of the intervention of His Excellency. There are some concerns and raised about the transparency of these figures being peddled, uh, like we had the free bus ride. And uh, one cannot particularly you know, get his hand nitty-gritty on the figures as per how it generated into over five billion, like the free bus ride. Now, what are your, um, what do you bring to the table as regards uh, giving a, a good record or good account of the over one billion naira that will be spent on this project? Phil, I want to assure you that even though we live in a very um, toxic society where it has become very difficult for us to trust ourselves. There are still people in this land that can be trusted. There are people in this land that can be objective in their analysis that you can trust with funds and say, get this job done, while you have a monitoring architecture or a supervisory architecture to check them. 
this project is absolutely at the hands of the religious leaders. It's not driven by politicians. It's at the hands of fathers of faith. And like I said, what the governor has said is, you have, been, you have a structure, you have a system, both for the monks and for the churches that have been driving, trying to give aid or help to the hungry and to the vulnerable in the society. When All you right. go to church services, he has said, let me assist that system. Okay. Okay. Now, the, these fathers are going to take responsibility for, from the beginning to the end of this project. And I can assure you that on the part of the government, there are a lot of monitoring systems, supervisory systems, to ensure that there is credibility and accountability in the process. Any moment from now, procurement will begin at all. It's going to be in the view of the media. Okay. It's not let, let me allow that to sink into the minds of the viewers and listeners right. on Independent Radio. Thank you. Because I know basically there will be questions in that direction because in as much as is the governor of the state, he doesn't only represent the Christians and the Muslims. We have the idol worshippers. <laughs> we have the pagans. So what's the light in that, uh, John Poche? Thank you very much. Like you just uh, mentioned, um, if I'm from, I'm a Christian, I'm a bishop, if he's thinking of how to question the effect of hunger through the faith leaders, using the church leaders under the platform of Khan and the Islamic leaders for that, what happened to the African traditional religious <laughs> persons? They are human beings. Exactly. What happened to the market men and women? What happened to the students, the pupils in the primary school? Right? It's a misplaced priority. I have always said that those in government are possessed with demons. But well, you can't say that of this. <laughs> listen, listen. I don't know the government you're talking listen. about, but not, not particularly Nigerian listen, government. Listen, I didn't mention any name. Okay. That why they are at or before they enter government, they reason like human beings, they interact. But once they enter government and answer His Excellency, they no longer reason as normal human beings. Maybe it's because of the Herculean task they carry. Come on, easy lies the head. Come in, sir. That wears the crown. I'm if the head is not ready for <laughs> wear the crown, he better don't attempt. Are you hearing me? But he who wears the shoes knows where it pinches. Oga, you are you are you their lawyer? If you know that the shoe is undersized, do, do, do anybody need to force him to wear it? You must wear the shoe that size you to give you comfort. That's how you wear your shoe. So if the shoe becomes a torment and you have conscience in you, you like yourself, you know you have a life to fulfill, then put the shoe away and leave so that you fulfill your destiny. That's not what brought us here. You are diverting me. Now, before Midwest was created, during the Western region, Awolowo established farm settlements. And these farm settlements, they were primary, secondary, school, houses were built there, and these families stayed there and they grew up there. And in this settlement, they produced so many food items. We still have one at Mbili. We have the knife. We have the rubber research. We have at Ewohimi. And the purpose of this is to ensure that one, you have taken some persons out of joblessness and put them somewhere to be engaged and to be useful. Number two, whatever they are producing is coming to the market to feed the people and they can export. Cocoa was the order of the day. And Western region was reigning by it, making a lot of money from it. Then there come free health and free education. Now this one, they gave you money because the people, according to them, not one of them that is hungry. According to them that Nigerians are hungry. Nigerians are suffering, and I'm not one of them that is suffering or hungry. Do you know why? God said we should be godly and be contented. People wake up and curse themselves just because some people are saying it. He's hungry. He was able to soak gari in his house, but yet he's hungry. 
is suffering, has no money, and he has 200 naira in his pocket, yet is causing himself. It's an ungrateful element. And God does not toy with a liar. God called such person a liar. And no liar will enter the kingdom of God. Are you saying there are no hungry people in the country? There is no hungry people. <laughs> the level <laughs> is this. You the are speaking that faith they, into they say, this. I'm not speaking faith. It's a reality. Some person will kick out and use it to entertain people and eat. Some people will go and buy crayfish and sokugari. They have also eaten. It's what is available to them. Are you hearing me? The next stage is God increase my source of income and my connections so that I can begin to buy fish. I can buy meat. I can do this. I can do that. It also I say there is no winch in Nigeria that is who you be. <laughs> that is worrying or laziness. Okay. People are joining the crowd because they are lazy. Now, if the governor have called people like us to advise them, we will tell him this one billion go to somewhere in Yokoyom. Take acquire vast area of land. Go there, employ youths now that we're about to start farming. Plant a cassava, plant pepper, plant a, 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 a plantain, plant a, a, other things so that these people come. So that these people will be working there, make their place comfortable for them. Okay, but obviously a pastor then, could be waiting for you. A pastor could be waiting for you because you're one of the religious leaders. And so okay, basically, no, I leave that are, side are you saying, now. Are you saying, that, let me advise my Are you people. saying you will reject let that? Let me advise my governor. Okay. I'm not looking for a governor's food. No, 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 not I'm for not you. Looking like for you said, food. not for you. I'm not, not for looking the for food for the hungry. can for anybody. Not I for you. Me. Don't forget, not for I you. Listen, but for the listen, poor, the hungry. Listen, and I don't know who is poor. Because Jesus said the poor will always remain with us. Are you, you understand? Statement of poverty is a statement of the mind. It's so you that this, announce the what, poverty. What you just, what you I just can't see now. my brother now. I don't and know exact, how much. And exactly I don't know how much is in his pocket. And exactly what you begin to call book. him poor man or rich man. Okay, okay, I'll come back to you. Me, I'll come back to you. Me. And exactly I, what you took from the good book shows that <laughs> we have the poor in our midst. If so let him establish if Christ can say that if Christ can say that one two billion every month, I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you, Now let's get your uh, fair judgment. Fair judgment. Fair judgment. Fair judgment. Fair judgment. Fair judgment. Now now let's get your uh, fair judgment in all of this because indigents or residents are saying that there should have been a better way to ameliorate the plight of uh, the people in this. Well, Phil, is uh, you are dragging me into this matter painfully. Because I have not been a friend or advocate of palliative. It has never been. If, it's, if, I, if you are deficient of what to do, what to say these days, you don't have to bother yourself. Go to AI. Ask intelligent, I mean, artificial intelligence to advise you okay. if you have nothing to do. What is palliative? Did you know that there are palliatives until you insert demonstration? Okay? Did you know that there were foods packed in, 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 in storehouses? In storehouses? Until the demonstration, we didn't know. And they were wasting our money in there. That's not the way to spend our money. I feel very sorry for those who are doing this, and even those who try to, because they give you a small bag of rice, three, four days, it's finished. Then you come back to square one. What is palliative? That is not palliative. Palliative can be used on roads. Let's just put some palliatives on this road, not on how to feed our people. It, it is wrong. Right from the presidency to the government to the local government. That's not what we should do. That money being used for palliative, whatever they call it, should be used to develop farm settlements, improve our agriculture. Two days ago, they ransacked Niger State of bandits. Did you see thousands of people in the forest, like animals eating leaves? The other day, almost 300 of our children are seen in the forest. Nobody is saying anything. You are talking of fucking palliatives. No, no, no. We don't no. use that word. Please. Sorry, my dear. Please, please, please. We are, we are not allowed to use the F word. I apologize on your behalf for that. Don't let me. Don't distract me. Okay. We, 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 we are talking of palliative. Palliative is not the issue now. So we're going to get our children from the savannah forest. They say forest, forest, forest. What is forest? It's forest in Kaduna. You stand anywhere in Kaduna. You see up to five miles. Did you see the people on the bandits who are in the forest? They said forest. The house sitting down there, more than a thousand. These are Nigerians that can gainfully be employed in farm settlements. Like he said, we all like to what our Lord did. 
We are alive with what Ziki or Ziki we did. These are fathers of this country. I don't know who brought that word palliative. It's affecting us very badly. For me, when I see people talking about palliatives, I, I, I laugh at them. What, what is it going to sustain? How long will it sustain you? And our youth go there to break open the stores and take. It's just very transient period. So, sir, if you are in a position, tell them that we need all that money. We're talking of one billion now. One billion is still a lot of money. Over a billion. Over, well, over a billion. Because that's why those states, yeah. it's like that all over the states. A monthly all, plan. All, a monthly all plan. over 36 states. We can't. Look, we have no road from here to Abuja. Our children, our people, our loved ones are dying on the roads on a daily basis. We can't that money do something there? To build better roads, build better schools. Schools are falling on our children. We cannot build, rebuild schools. Okay, but don't forget that. Don't forget that this plan region. could also bring about businesses for uh no, whole and in any case finally, this is not where they can also buy these finally, food also. items from the market or from the community, community that will also boost trade excuse me sir i don't really want to discuss politics because to me it's meaningless oh it's very meaningless so we should take on some something else that we can do to solve our problem but like bishop said i agree with him god himself said that as long as the world exists there must be poor people even if you talk of palliative, why do you determine the way it can get to poor of the poor? That's what the meaning of policy, the poor of the poor. Thank God I'm not poor of the poor. I'm not even poor either. <laughs> so where, 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 what, what uh, parameter are you going to use to determine? I think that brings us to the next question. Now, look at this country. We don't have data. We don't know those that are brought to the world in the day, those that lead the world in the day. We don't know. We are just moving on. Oh. When this, this master is over, he goes away. When, the, when you, you retire now, you go away. We are all just moving in the dark. Unfortunately, we are moving in the dark. We are so sad. Some of us are so sad. Some of us have our hands over our shoulders. We think that these policies are all wrong. But it's not a policies. hopeless situation, is well, it? Well, it is it's out of empathy that they are saying, oh, let us organize palliative. How long will it go on? How long? How long, Phil? The other day, they, they, a country, a country uh, got, got into uh, uh, a military regime over and above us here in Niger. Oh, we are going to destroy Niger. Oh, we are going to do this. We, are, we, we spent a lot of money trying to arrange the sanctions. Because, but you forgot that we have a deal with Niger. These are books that you should go and read. We have a deal with Niger, still, ne, ne, the country of Niger. Yeah, yeah, Niger. We have a deal with them. Please don't block the Niger, Niger River. We will block. We will do our own and then give you supply. It was pretty quick, whoa, something for something. We will give you electricity, but don't stop the river, Niger water. You said, no, we are going to kill. Now we can't fly to Europe. Because there's a policy of uh, 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 quick, quick plant. That's how Solo Solo yeah. said it. He that owns the land, owns it to the sky. <laughs> we cannot pass through Niger. We are, we are suffering our children. We have. Our children cannot go abroad now. Okay. They have to go through Ghana, go to Liberia, go around. Normally, we pay about 500 tickets to go to London. Now, we pay as close as uh, uh, two, 2 million because we were not properly advised. Okay. Uh, to set the so uh, I'm perspective straight. Sir. Don't bring me to perspective. I'll say the okay, okay. time without normal. Okay. I'm going to turn the question when it comes, comes to your talk. Thank you. And now, to set the perspectives right, uh, the uh, barrister Leonard has said it as regards the parameters, not having the parameters. But I know the governor is efficient, and uh, his administration has been effective. Uh, it's not only a dual state, too. Less, yeah, I, I know, it's I know, all over the country. But, but uh, looking at what we have here, uh, can we bring out a parameter that was deployed by His Excellency over why he had to you know, uh, push these funds to can, and of course the Islamic uh, body? Well, are, there, are there statistics yes, to show that yes. it, the it, very poor of the poor are in churches? You see, it, uh, I'm happy exactly. we are having exactly. this. Exactly. I'm happy we are having exactly. this discourse. Yes, exactly. You see, that's the reason why it's important when government is coming up with policies, you must be able to reach out to people that are within the committee to be able to get first-hand information. Because when you are far off, you can make a whole lot of wrong assumptions. You know, now, just for the notice of the public, there is a Edo State, uh, there is a recent Edo State poverty map for 2023 conducted by World Bank that showed 
where in partnership with the appropriate agency in Edo State, that shows where the poorest of the poor are in Edo State, across the 18 local government. In fact, that data map shows that everywhere in the local government, there are the poorest of the poor. Yeah, but we're trying to understand why it has to do with the religious I'm bodies. going to connect it. That's why I'm Because we heard about a prayer I'm amount that was released some time back mm. uh, for prayers uh, in Nigeria. And uh, we don't know if that's what it's going to take. Is it that for? Is it for, is it for prayers? Well, 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 you just well, that well, the poorest? No, no, I didn't no, say there is the poorest. Okay. I said there is a poverty map mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. that shows uh, across the 18 local governments of the two states where you have people that really need this intervention as the poorest of the poor. Okay, L let me quickly say that, Phil, this is quite different. Uh, this is a project or a program, rather, that we are all going to witness. I, I need you to agree with me that, like in our local adage, there are many ways to kill a rat. No same government We approach the issue of what we are passing through in Nigeria today in Anedu State with one method. They have to be diverse interventions. Okay, but what's the surety, that, what's the surety that this will trickle I'm, down? Yes, because I'm coming. it's one thing to release this funds. I'm, I'm coming. It's another for maybe some religious leaders to increase or empower their empire. No, it's, it's At the detriment of the... Okay, this, uh, this, is, what, oh, this, is, what, this is what happened. Okay? We have a data, a uh, poverty map analysis which was handed over to the committee. And in line with that data map, communities of critical needs and intervention were identified. And the churches in those communities, please mind you, a billion era is not 10 billion. <laughs> if you look at the current economic attitude, yes, you will discover that our purchasing power have reduced. Yes. So when you even take a billion era to the market, you'll be shocked at where the first intervention is not going to get to everybody. But by, with the help of the Edo State data map, you know, let's give this to His Excellency. He's not a careless person. Before mm -hmm. he thinks about a particular intervention, he has been able to, the first thing he talks about is data. And as I speak to you, Edo State tries to collate data from every sector. Okay, but sure okay. that when, so, okay, let me, let me land here. When this intervention is going to be done with the churches in those communities where you have the poorest of the poor. Okay, it's not, as if, it's not as if it's for church now, members. No, beyond. Okay, but it, it but the, religious, beyond. the religious leaders are the ones organizing it yes. for the very poor of the poor in those communities. Thank you. You are getting it. <laughs> now we have to identify this community, which we have, according to the data analysis map. They will now have to look at the churches and the mosque. You know, the governor, in his own wisdom, decided not to engage the political structure this time and say, let me engage the religious structure. I think this is the first time, and we should give it the benefit of a doubt. You know, and like I said, there are plans to make sure the medias are invited when these things are procured and when distributions are ongoing. It's not going to be done in the secret. There are committees responsible for counting these items to be sure that it measure up with the amount. So all the systems and structures, the monitoring and the supervision are already in place. So I can assure you that this is not the kind of intervention that will go the way of others. And you know what sometimes I try to say, like I'm happy my father have used that word. Empathy is part of leadership. Even Jesus said, I was hungry, you didn't feed me. I was in prison, you didn't visit me. You know, the Bible recognized the father. There are poor people. Yeah, but, that is not, but that is not for the, the government to key into. <laughs> well, but you just raised it. This is just the release. No, no, you just raised something is, from the good book. Yes. That is individual, okay. in, individualistic. No, it's see, individualistic. See, see, not see, for, see, see, don't not for some set no, 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 no. Let's look at ways. of government responsibility Let's is look welfare. Yeah, yeah. Let's look at ways. Let's interrogate the aspect of what will benefit the people better. What you will do that will last the test of time for the people, that will improve on trade, that will improve on the general well-being of the entire people, or what you just do for a few months and then exactly. it ends there. You see, exactly. which one will you be see, more impactful? See, I that's where think. Nigerians or that's I, where I, the people I don't, of the state think, are reacting I to I don't this. think you were listening to me. I said. You don't use one approach to solve a problem. It's just like when we started talking about the bandit, bandit issues. Okay. We started talking about the needs to have different approaches. There, there is even the kinetic and the non-kinetic methods. So there are plans going on. As I talk to you, there's a huge 
investment going on in our agricultural sector, which has even started before now. The Commissioner for Agri could be in the best position to respond to that. Right. There are people being trained. Me, okay. There are, there are lands being allotted for people to go. So there are okay. there is also a plant empowerment. Those are coming. coming. I'm just trying to say I'm, that I'm in sympathy with this you. is not all the intervention yeah. His Excellency okay. is doing. Yeah, yeah, it's I just know. one of the ways to also reach out to those that cannot country. feed. See, Phil, there is one guy in this land. Okay. Okay. Let's forget about the father. I'll ask you just uh, fathers. Okay, no, 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 I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you. Let him react to what you just said. I'm doing well. Governor is doing well. That's what I'm saying. Thank you, sir. I just mentioned during my introduction that there are over a thousand people now. Yes, sir. In the forest in Niger State, of bandits, yes, sir. not of good human beings, so, of bandits, those who kill over a thousand people. By the time you bring one billion there, I hope you know the, what one billion is now. Yes. One billion is just one billion into one thousand places. Yes. It, it's not, it doesn't mean anything now. Some young boys, all these uh, boys, uh -huh. they have bought that. Uh -huh. They are yeah, even asking for one billion. <laughs> they have, <laughs> With the current exactly. <laughs> they, they, they spend one billion in two days. So, if we take that out of Ninja State for all those bandits, one billion is finished. I am saying one billion cannot help Nigeria. Yeah, make it, make it more impactful. Yes, cannot, it's cannot start impactful. Okay. But one billion can do some projects that everybody will enjoy. But don't forget, he said one of the ways that the government is approaching this. Yes, yes. All right. Um, yes. So, finish so let, on that point yes, in 30 seconds. Let, let me land by appealing to my father's here and the general public to say, to us, let's, to yes, the to the general public, yeah. let's give this the benefit of a doubt. Yes. Mm. You know, these things are going to be done in the open. Like I said, the media will be taken along. The, how it was done will be published. Of course, you can I can assure you that some of the high-profile religious leaders that are involved in this are people that will not want their name to be stained in any way. I'm yeah, going to take it on you after the totality so, of this program or scheme <laughs> <laughs> in order to for us to access the like, performance. Like, like, like I said, Phil, it's, this project is totally in the hand of our fathers of faith, okay. both from the most mosque and from the Christendom. And I want to assure you that... But it's possible your purview to also reality. inspect and monitor you are as correct. the SSA. Part of my job, yes, you matters. are correct. Part of my job is supervision. Okay. And I can assure you that we have put modalities in place to ensure that... And another thing, you made a statement which which seems like you were in one of our deliberations. Part of the things His Excellency have instructed is to ensure that the money is poured back into the system. All the goods are going to be procured within Edo State. In fact, localized in the, across the 18 local governments of Edo State. Specifically, His Excellency have given that directive. So it's not the money that is going to be taken out or food are going to be imported or somewhere. And that, in a way, we also boost the reinvestment. economy. And as a reinvestment. Okay, okay. You know, so it has okay. a multiple repo effect. Okay. Uh, in, uh, in, in one minute, let's see uh, your light in that uh, as say, we go to I the next topic. I sympathize with my brother. <laughs> no, 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 call no, no, it sympathy. Well. I'm it's coming. Well. I'm coming. Because it's like we're putting him on a horse seat. He cannot defend this thing. He cannot. He said he's going to play a supervisory role. And there are a lot of things that we see. He dare not say it out. There are a lot that we see. Sir, tell His Excellency that the civil society is interested. I will give you our card. We want to be party. Are to you lobbying for your party? I'm not lobbying. <laughs> well, basically, that's party. your responsibility. We want we to also be party have to, to inspect. monitor. Yes, of course. To monitor to inspect. how you. Oh. You don't need to wait to be invited. We are not <laughs> saying. We are not <laughs> saying. It's your. Well, it's in your DNA. It's your structure. Yes, yes, don't give yes, us yes, money. Yes, yes, we will play our role. Yes, 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 play our role. Yes, no, yes, nobody can walk without money. Okay. Number two. Nobody can walk without money. Is that the only way to cushion this effect? is engagement in agriculture. Yes, and I as like a that, bishop, that I want to distance the church from this kind of uh, arrangement, that the church is not poor. The church in Nigeria is not poor. They are not saying the church is poor. They are not saying the church is poor. The church is only going to be used yes, as, as a, a way to yes, extend yes, this way, to the poor. Yes, yes, because he mentioned that through the church, they can reach the community. Trusting the, the church, church, the church, church, the church, the yes. church is not going to reach any community. We can only reach the people within. Okay, our, thank you, thank you. Our church, okay. Okay. our churches. All right. So if they are giving us a, a assignment, 
that because you brought palliative, I should be the one to go to other market, go to no, this crowd, no, 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 this one, to, to reach communities. Yes. To we are not any the distribution. Yes, we are going to look at the statistics in the church. If they have accepted it, we will work on what is available. All right, to thank you. To distribute it. Okay. So, but that again, I say, is a misplaced priority. <laughs> Feed the hungry yes. initiative, and that's basically what we've been on, and uh, we've had the. SSA to the governor on religious matters. Um, no, like said, sorry, uh, on religious matters. Osagi got sent a uh, He is the SSA to the governor. No, like I said, got in Obaseki on religious matters. And uh, we also had the opportunity to enjoy the conversation of the uh, chieftain to the Progressives Congress and the person of Gentleman Amigo. And of course, the human rights activist with us, Osadolo Oche. Uh, let's look, quickly look at what you said recently, uh, which is uh, a, a portion of what we're going to be looking at in the second topic, uh, the aspect of the Kaduna abduction. Yes. The 287 people yes. you know, that have been abducted, uh, we heard Humongo's amounts that they were demanding yes. earlier, but yes. Yes. now they've narrowed it down to 1 billion yes. Yes. naira. Looking at the 20 days of abduction, they did said if they don't get this, then they're going to be killing their hostages. And the response of the federal government, uh, the president particularly, that said it's not going to be cajoled in the strings of uh, ransom demands, and that uh, giving them a marching order to the security agents to rescue these uh, uh, people on hot alongside their teachers, you know, without any negotiation. Yes. Now, do you see this as an act of the president, uh, of which is the leader of your party, uh, or Progressive Congress? Do you see this as an act of the president? Playing politics with the human life. No, it's not playing politics. By the time you begin to negotiate with bandits, then the country is finished. Oh, we are going to pay 500,000, we are going to pay 200 million and all that. Then the country is finished, they take over. So what he has said, but he needs to go further. They are taking up 284 of our children, our beloved children. What are they been eating? In the forest? They now eat. What who will feed to? It's a crowd. 284 children. How were they able to take them all away? Are they cows? Why would a few people just lead our children to the forest? 284. There were over 300. Some other people left. It's, it's, when you think about it, is this a country or where are we? All right. Now they are there. 284. But we've had this, uh, we've sir. had this structure of insecurity in the country. I'm coming and uh, the president would have been ready yeah. to go into governance having the mindset of tackling this. I agree. But shouldn't, I agree that, shouldn't he have been proactive yeah, precisely. in order to avoid precisely. this thing from happening? Yes, precisely. That's where I'm going. Now that about 284 of our children in the forest eating, because definitely they can't feed them. Where would they get the food? Can't you mobilize 1,000 soldiers? to go into that forest. 1,000 soldiers to surround the forest. We have helicopters in Nassau Rock that will go around and exactly come and tell you where those children are. We have drones. If you don't kill any of the children, the 1,000 soldiers can take over that forest and they will raise up their hands. But you just sit down in the office and say, oh, they could come out on hot. No, <laughs> it is more than that. You know. You people are young, when somebody like a Diagbon, you probably didn't know him. Mm -hmm. You won't see his teeth mm -hmm. when he's talking. Then you know how serious he is. Even in your kitchen, you feared a Diagbon in this country. You feared and respected somebody known and called a Diagbon because he was a very serious minded person. Not now when ministers go to cook uh, Idomin in their friend's shop, in their friend's kitchen, and say, but let the whole world know that I'm cooking Idomin here, minister. What is that? You are taking governance as something very light. Fee, please, tell them. We, soldiers, police, DSS can take over that forest. You are already telling them. <laughs> I, I they can take over the forest. Yes, yes, yes. But, 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 don't laugh what you are saying. But don't, forget, but don't forget lives are involved. Yes. And I believe uh, that's why we have yeah, to be we diplomatic. We don't pray that they die. Because these but are the two process, children. The excuse me, sir. Yes. Of, in the process. 287 even more, you know. Yeah, there's it's what's not what, it's not what we can. SMS. Yes. There is a policy of SMS, some must suffer. In the process of taking over these children, some bandits will be killed. Okay, but some of these children might even uh, lose their lives. Well, let's look at but it if it's a function of, sorry, let's look at it if it's a function of uh, not being in the constitutional provision for government to negotiate with terrorists. Again, again you are taking us backward. This is mm -hmm. what we are talking about. 
This is what we are talking about. You are quoting constitution for the, with the life of 284 children. You are quoting constitution. What we are saying is, can the government negotiate? Wait. With bandits? Then you are selling your country. Okay. The much soldiers there. Much police there. DSS there. All the, 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 the military people, all of them go and bring back our children. Okay. We will come out. I just told you that there's a forest in Niger. In any case, where is the forest in Savannah? It's not like Okomu forest. Where is the forest in Savannah? You start in one place, you see about five, five, five miles away. Where is the forest in Kaduna and Abuja? We did all our forest. So Savannah, you can know where they are and surround them. You would not give up these children. Or we finish all of you. Whether you are a bandit, whatever you are, you fear life. All right. Ordinary ants fears to be killed. Let's take your reaction on this, Osage God sent before it gets to our uh, Osage okay. Well, it is, it's a very pathetic situation. Yes. My heart goes to the families and the parents of these kids. Uh, like I always say in various fora, uh, the survivors of today might become the victims of tomorrow oh, if yes. we don't speak up against this heinous crime against the Nigerian nation and our collective, uh, um, you know, survivor, so to speak. Now, I said this because I am particularly worried and concerned because how can we be battling with one thing for over 10 years? Uh, no word. Is it, I, I said one time on this uh, platform, is it a bandit spiritual people? Are they ghosts? <laughs> and Phil, for me, when you see Banditry trifling, it shows three things. Number one, a lack of political will. Number two, system failure. And number three, corruption. Okay, obviously you are against the government negotiating. Oh, of course. And nobody With a threat that is involved you can uh, one billion naira. Yeah. Otherwise, let, they start let, killing let, your let hostages me, after 20 days. Land here. I, I, see, you know, sometimes, irrespective of our political differences, we should learn to go beyond politics. Yes. And possibly look at what is working for another government that may not be working for another. We had a similar case like this on up to one, two, three different locations in Edo State. The healthcare train station was one of such. Maybe we should study and say, how was that success achieved? I mean, in recovering back all the hostages. Now, what we need is, for me, I think we have gotten to a point where the pre Mr. President have to be very harsh and decisive yeah. about this. I, if I was the president of this nation, I would tell the tribunity chief, if you don't, the chief, sorry, the chief of our minister, if you don't give me these people back in 48 hours, you are yeah. fired. Yeah, that's right. In 48 hours, fire him and put somebody else. You have 48 hours. If you don't give me this student back, you are fired. If he fails, put another person. That's right. If you don't <laughs> give yes. me in 48 hours, you are fired. You will oh, see that oh, within yes. two, three changes, okay. all these Quickly, we should be yeah. getting responses from the uh, viewers oh, and of the lights of our children. On independent yeah. radio, the number to call, I believe, it will be on the screen, 0807 777 0800. Point your calls at us and make your comments, whatever, what you've heard in the conversation. You have the floor. Uh, let's yes. take your reaction. See, the uh, let um, Sani Abacha Actually. say when insecurity lasts more than 24 hours, you know the government, government is involved. Exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah, Don't rule it out. No. First, the issue of insecurity in Kaduna, so many fingers have been pointed to Erufai. Whether it's right or wrong, it's an allegation, yeah. mm. which he has not cleared. Two, where is that forest in Kaduna uh -huh. that can host these people? This number of people. 284 yeah. people that are still there, there were more than 300. Yeah. How did this, how many were these bandits that escorted exactly. these people exactly. into that so-called <laughs> forest? That people <laughs> in the streets did not see them. In the broad daylight. In the broad daylight. In the school, they were in the school. Yes. Broad daylight, morning that no reaction from any security agent. Number three, if government is sincere, both federal, state, and local government, if they are sincere, those dark spots that have been identified, take bulldozer to those places, okay. clear them, exactly. and put agricultural settlement here, exactly. and mobilize 1,000 1, soldiers to that location, we will get food, and we will not get 
bandit anymore. Because the bandit cannot come to that agricultural settlement where you have 1,000 soldiers to come and operate. Exactly. I agree with They'll you. be protected. But when government is not doing that, they are playing game with the life of our children. Yes. They should be held responsible for what happened to these children. Okay, let's take, let's take this caller's response. Good morning, caller. Tell us your name and location and kickstart your contribution quickly. Thank you. Good morning, sir. I am Harry Basson from uh, Chiloko Road, 179 Chiloko Road. Ah, that's my area. Harry, go ahead with your contribution. Uh, my, con my contribution is this. The government is aware of what is happening. I cannot imagine 280 children back. I don't know. I cannot imagine the same code that we convey those people that the security operators will not be aware of where they went through. It is it's not, it's not, it's not factual. So we must recognize that Nigerians are not foolish people. We are, we are supposed to know that the government, they are part of this thing. The security of the are part of this thing. They are being funded. And they need more money. That's why they are, they are saying, okay, they should... Well, that's your opinion. <laughs> that's your opinion. Uh, we don't, the statistics we have doesn't show that the government is involved in this. And uh, it's your opinion. But let's just be objective on how to tackle this. Headlong. I'm saying, I'm saying things from the map of Nigeria. I discovered that Kazuma is at the same time. It's not half So you, you, you will see that for where they took those children, it is, it is inside the state. For them to go through that route, they say uh, it's outside the country or somewhere. It's not factual. Okay, thank you, Harry. Okay, thank you, Harry. You okay, thank you. You've articulated your point. Let's get more calls on the number zero eight zero seven triple seven zero three double zero. You still have the floor, uh, Oche. You see, like I I mentioned, if the security agents are positioned in these locations, banditry will stop. Like my brother uh, Pastor Rousseau have mentioned, if the governor, the president, gives a marching order to the chief of army staff. I'm giving you 24 hours to bring back these children. Okay. Or you are fired. All right. We have another caller. Good morning. Good morning, caller. Your name and location. This is Sonny. I'm calling you from Uniben. Sonny Gadosa from University of Benin. Thank you very much. Go ahead with your contribution, please.
to see how they can give food or create farm. Just let people pay them monthly. Let them work in that farm. But if that one is gone, this one is on that money that goes to enter another place. Thank you very much, Sonny Ige Dosa. Well, I, I think you'll be responding to that, um, the SSO to the governor, uh, Osage Gossen, but that will be after uh, you have taken your beat. Uh, let's look at the way forward in rega as regards the uh, insecurity saga and, of course, the well, point it, of rescue. I said the it, it has to wake up. The government should wake up. Okay. It is the government that has to wake up. If all of us do, if you, if you see something, you say something. That is what belongs to the general public. Yeah. You see something, you say something. But we, we are in Kaduna that everybody saw 284 children being led like cows into the forest. Everybody saw them, nobody said anything. The, the people in that area too have some questions to answer. Even or if they said something and nobody listened, they should accuse the government okay. that we said X, Y, Z and nobody listened to us. Okay, you let's know, take this order if response. I, if I had the opportunity, to rule this country okay. for one week, I tell you. Everybody has got an opportunity. It's one just week. for you to wait for no, the next four years. My teeth, and then you contest. I will and never smile and I will give to you, directive. Then you rule. <laughs> I will give directive. All right. And they must be carried. Thank you. Or you are fired. Okay, thank you. I have another call. Good morning, caller. Yeah, good morning. Your name and location, quickly. Yeah, my name is Jamani. I'm speaking from Airport Road. Okay, Chairman from Airport Road. Jamani. 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 Go ahead with your contribution, Jamani. Yeah, I think, I think I'll speak on... Uh, the issue of the kidnap. I think uh, the panelists have said already that it is a failure of government over time that has made insecurity to swell. If when they started at the beginning, government put it on the ground and deal friendly with terrorism, banditry, and all of that, now it has been a thing of the past. But because they have tried over years, and there is no hiding the fact that you have the hands of politicians in all of this. That is a reality, even though we try to we try to hide away from it. It's a reality that politicians have an impute in all of this insecurity. Then coming to the issue of uh, Governor Basetti and the one billion thing, well you know that whenever government comes out anything now, people are excited but they hide their joy because we have trust issues. Instead of being excited, they rather take the issue to go to public thought and uh, is it good? Is it bad? Should we be excited about it? Uh, should we run with it? Should we be a little bit slow? There is issue of trust. Now, the government starts to work on trust issues. It will be very, very hard, even though their intentions may be not more genuine yet. But because of trust issues, it will be very hard for people to 100% wholeheartedly accept whatever our government brings forward. Thank you, Germany. Thank you, Germany. Well, Germany said it, and uh, Sonny Igedosa also said it. It has to do with issues of trust and uh, looking at what they've said concerning the governor, even from the past, what has been on in terms of uh, the sincerity of government to make the people of the state, you know, uh, trust it. So what do you have to say in reaction to that, uh, Osage Gosset? Well, uh, first of all, I want to identify with the fact that today is difficult for the average uh, public person to want to trust uh, the government and the politicians. And sometimes you can't blame these people. Mm. It's because of experiences over Never. the years. Mm -hmm. you know. And sincerely, if you want to get any result in any venture, both in the government and private sector, it's not about talking about trust. It's talking about the measures, the systems that you have put in place, which have already been put in place in this case. But let me quickly round up with this. This palliative is a palliative it is not going to get to everybody. Uh, we need to get this clear, you know, because like our father you have even said, what is really one billion in the current economic reality of our state and our nation? You know, so it's not as if the governor is targeting feeding everybody. But there are people who need it, which the poverty map is leading us to. So it's just like somebody said, what did you do during the coronavirus? There were palliatives during coronavirus, if that is where it's going to. But the fact that they didn't get to you doesn't mean that something wasn't really done. You know, because the goal is how do we reach out to the poorest of the poor? Those who really need this thing so that they will not be thinking of maybe banditry right. or kidnapping. All right, thank you. you. Know, that, that's the goal. And okay, you let's, fanatic. let's trust the system. Uh, uh, let's trust right. I want to on this yeah. in say in that the government should wake up. Even in my place, a banker, there is also <laughs> kidnapping going on there. Lord. Government should wake <clears> up to their responsibility to protect lives and property as a shrine in the Nigerian constitution. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll give you quickly a scenario. Yeah. Three, four years ago, 
I said, let me give some palliative to people in my neighborhood. Yeah. I bought about 200 tubers of young outside there. And I said, let everybody that's passing take one. Mm. Take one. Take one each. One each. <laughs> they started it. In five minutes, yeah, everything people, is I live on the highway. Oh, yes. People stop their cars to come and take <laughs> And it was not made for the poor people. Mm. I mean, it was made for the poor people. Yes. Not for people. People parked their cars and created anarchy in my street to come and take a tube of young in your own car. And those are not supposed to be seen those as the not, poor. And I was saying, the people around come and take one a tube each, a tube each. People pack their car and will come to take care of See, that's what I was telling my, my very good as I said. Look, how are you going to do it? Uh, because it brings about chaos. Because it's so much. There's too <laughs> many. Okay. So big I, thanks. I, I sympathize with you, my dear. Big thanks, uh, <laughs> uh, gentlemen, amigo. Big thanks, uh, Osadolo Oche. Big thanks, Osage Godsen, for taking our time. Thank you. Big thanks, Sonny Gedosa. Uh, you called in from University of Benin. Big thanks to you also, Harry. And also, big thanks to you, Jamani. Well, big thanks to our listeners and our viewers. Uh, likely, we'll do this same time next week. I am Philip Omo Gupo. Goodbye.